we are treading on dangerous water now. And I wanted to say this, I've said this privately to leadership. Black leadership understands a little better because they see the deep-seated resentment. And whether it's founded or not, they see it. Uh, I've spoken to Jewish leadership, some of the uh, people who job it is to protect against uh, attacks on their community. And one said something simply, he said, oh, well, he's done, referring to Kanye. You know, um, when I was the chairman of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, for 20 years, I would spar with an ally, but yet an adversary. His name was Abe Fox. He was the chairman of the ADL. And the reason I became chairman of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, which kind of had the same mission, was because there was a rift between uh, the Jewish community and Minister Farrakhan. And Minister Farrakhan became much more powerful and famous because of this rift. Because he would not... Um, uh, he, they didn't have dialogue. I set up dialogue with, with uh, Rabbi Snyder, who was the president of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, and Ellie Nivell and Elon Steinberg and others, and Cornell West and Reverend Jackson and Reverend uh, King, Martin Luther King III, and, and Reverend Charlton. So they all came to my house. Some did not show up. Ellie Wiesel did not show up. They were already upset by statements made, and they would not have dialogue. So it was Ellie Wiesel and Israel Singer didn't show up. But there was a nice dialogue, which I would love to have publicized or even put on television between Minister Farrakhan and Rabbi Snyder. That was 20 some odd years ago. And after I saw the trouble that Rabbi Snyder got in for having the courage to come to this meeting, I immediately took my role as secretary of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding and turned it into chairman. I accepted the role as chairman. And I worked for a lot of years. And Abe Foxman, back to Abe Foxman, uh, was the, the chairman, I guess his title was, of the ADL. The problem is, during the time that Louis Farrakhan was, and I was seeking to create dialogue, there was no real interest because it's easier as it had been with Marcus Garvey and Reverend Jackson and Reverend Sharp and countless, countless other black leadership just to point out the mistake made and the words that are so hurtful made by these leaders and then they would walk away. And that's right, I, you know, they said that I said something about the Holocaust with animals and they, and, and they came after me and said, Russell, don't say Holocaust, it's such a hurtful word to the community. So I immediately apologized, it was not a problem for me. Um, and the same with Will Smith, as I said, and countless other black celebrities and leadership, we generally walk away. Because who wants to fight over hurting hurt people? Hurt people hurt people. And some members of the black community are hurting. That's why this reaction is coming. But not only the black community, poor people who need to point fingers are coming out of the woodwork. And Kanye is the only person, and not by a disingenuine, but by a genuine um, response. And I'm not saying he's disingenuine. I'm saying that they are not taking the clips where I've seen him be a little more genuine about his apology or his intention. His intention was not to cause more pain, but to have more people come out and be anti-Semites. Because he himself is not an anti-Semite. Kanye West is not an anti-Semite. He has questions. He has said some rude stuff, crude stuff, uh, horrible stuff if you're a person who comes from a community and perhaps your grandmother was in a uh, concentration camp. It's horrible what he said. Does he understand the gravity of what he said? Perhaps not. But what we want is for him to undo the harm. A brother... met a Jew. Most black people never even met a Jew. You know, if you're not in New York and L.A. and Miami, you, we don't want to hate people for our problems. We want to 
uh, embrace people and understand their problems, and we want to build bridges and have them understand, as they have in the past, in many cases, the problems of the black community. We want to build a bridge between two peoples who are both under fire. Uh, white supremacy is sitting back and pointing the finger at blacks and Jews right now. So what we want to do is build a bridge. Uh, I don't know what my algorithm is, but it just keeps popping up. They cancel this. They cancel that. They, you know, my first response is, Kanye, go and apologize for the things that were unintended and, and fix them. Publicly, go to a museum. Learn. Personally, learn why these words are so hurt, hurtful and how you maybe created a wave of hate that is bigger than you and scarier than you. Black leadership knows uh, the pain in the black community. <laughs> Jewish leadership knows the pain in the Jewish community and the threat of these words and how they can multiply. Attacking Kanye will not help us. Oh, we hate Kanye, he shouldn't have said it. Uh, none of that will help. And this is what my fight with Abe Klotman was over all the years. Every time he called out someone, I thought, all their fans are mad. If I had a nickel for every time someone called me and said, there they go again. With Charlemagne, or, you know, Tamika Maori, or God, every single black leader has said things that have been um, off color or maybe insensitive. But we cannot label everyone an anti-Semite because then their fans are triggered and then real anti-Semites come out of the woodwork and this is not the desired effect. The desired effect is to promote love and reconciliation. And in this case, since we're talking business, partnerships and growth. What I said about Kanye the other day was misconstrued. Someone said he said it was good that he was canceled. I pointed out that I worked on sneakers in the case of Adidas. And I said that we made our own sneakers. Kanye, you can make your own. You can be an inspiration. But if you make your own or own your own, still go to the best makers. Many times they will be your new Jewish partners if you start over. Um, we need to educate our brother, not destroy him. Destroying Kanye will not be good for the most important goal, which is the desired effect, which is the bridge building between our two communities. The history of blacks and Jews is that Jews, although white and almost partly like the white oppressor, Jews, although white and almost partly like the white oppressor, Jews, although white and almost partly like the white oppressor, they were there in places where the white uh, wasps were not. They were helpful in times when no one else was. Um, and the future, we should bridge a gap and build a future that is inclusive of black empowerment, more inclusive of black empowerment. I told my history, jewelry, fashion, film, television, financial services, records. I say movies, I mean, all of it, always with Jews. And I own my portion. I was not owned. No one controlled me. And no one can control Kanye. If he will build a bridge, but we don't need uh, the constant bashing of Kanye, it will not solve our problem or give us the, the effect okay. that is necessary which is the banding together of two people who have a common enemy in white supremacy. Oh, I think Jews are saying it's too late. Well, it's not too late. We got to fix it. Not too late. <clears throat> I, I saw one podcast with him and a Jewish fellow recently. Very big. Someone sent it to me. And he apologized. And he's working to rebuild Apologize for what he said that he believed was hurtful. But he was working to build a whole new network. 
don't stop him in front of black people because it will cause more anger. Support his growth and his education. And I think that is a more healing path than this strike him down. Again, it did not help uh, any time that I remember attacking someone publicly when you can speak to them privately. I'm saying this publicly, I can't call every single body, but I'm trying to explain a strategy to everyone that is more healing than the public. Because uh, I just keep getting every five minutes. He's, uh, he's done. They did it to him. He, people are angry. They don't know why. They're angry and pointing fingers because of the suffering in the black community and in underserved communities in general. White supremacists are made up of people who want to point fingers for their problems. And rather than emulating and borrowing and working with uh, the Jewish community, it's easier to point fingers. So that's it. I've said this before, but I really... Blacks ain't angry. Yeah, I know. Blacks should... Blacks have lots to be angry for with Kanye, but uh, they're triggered by this recent attack on him in ways that I think people don't understand. You know, the last thing I'll say is that I wrote a very loving letter to Donald Trump after his most hateful words. It was on the cover of many newspapers across the country. And what I wrote was, we know you better than that. Please. And let's build a bridge. You, all your partners were Jewish. That was Trump when he was anti right? All your other partners were black. All your friendships, your ex-girlfriend. Your, Trump, we know you better than that. Why are you writing that nice letter? Because if, in the absence of a bridge, Trump found his other friends, narcissists that he was, he found his friends. His friends were the people who hated those other people. And they kind of liked Donald Trump. They made him their leader. And the media could not shut Donald Trump down, right? They wrote, they published my letter on the cover. They wrote horrible things about it. They made him rise to the presidency. They were not able to stop him. People are so discontent. But <clears throat> I noticed on Charlemagne's show that they talked about Kanye and, and they were very negative, you know, and in black people, there's a, a lot of anger towards Kanye and they were negative about his comments about Jews and about blacks. And the people were 80% in support of Kanye. We don't want to create a monster. We want to you know, empower a person who can empower his community or can at least give example to how we can own our own businesses or support. He's, Kanye is, a, is not important in this scenario. The scenario that we're hopeful for is a bridge building for two communities. Why do I care? I spent 25 years doing this. God gives you a certain purpose. And Dharma, yogis call it. Something that I did for many years. I was not a black or a Muslim. Most of the work I did after fixing uh, either way, after fixing or as much as we did, we were the address for black Jewish relations. Most of the work that we did was Muslim Jewish relations. Understand the pain as much as a black man can understand the pain that's in the Jewish community. But I also understand the pain that's in the black community and in the underserved community. And whether it is uh, uh, the right way of going about it or not, uh, we understand why leadership and support systems of the Jewish community are so, so angry so swift in their condemnation of his words and his presence. But, you know, underserved and hurt people are also uh, rising and hate and hurt people hurt people. 
and hate can rise very quickly from people who are suffering. And we just want to create a bridge. That's it. I talk too much. Uh, I love you all. Namaste, yogis. Have a good day. Listen. Genesis chapter 11, verse 10. Explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13. Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the Jacob had 12 sons, for real, and these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.